At 16, he was working at the Playsto Sugar Mills in Mackay in Queensland, hardly the place where you'd expect an aspiring comedian to start. But into town came a small travelling show run by a guy called Happy Harry Salmon. And George met them at the station and persuaded Harry to give him an audition. And he got the job as a comic and general dog's body. He developed his singing, dancing, acrobatic and musical skills. It was a great training experience for him. After 12 months, I think he really saw that this, this was his forte and he thought that this is what he wanted to do. But once the tour ended, so it seemed did his prospects. 19-year-old George went back to cane cutting for a living, but the urge to entertain still needed an outlet. He found it in the bar of the local pub at Walkerston, where he also found a pretty young barmaid. He used to come to my auntie's uh, hotel to play the piano and to sing. I got quite fond of him. And uh, Auntie said, keep him for the business sake. George Wallace and Rita Nichols were married in 1917 at the People's Evangelical Mission House in Brisbane. George got a steady but mundane job canning pineapples before being reunited with an old friend. Happy Harry Salmon was starting a new tour, tracked George down and wanted to know, did he want his old job back? Could a duck swim was George's reply. George worked Rita into his act as his feed, and together they earned three pounds a week plus their keep. George was starting to make his name as a bush comic. Everybody say, oh, you should go to Sydney. You'd be this and you'd be that. And so I insisted that he could go to Sydney and see what it's all about. In the optimistic days after the Great War, theatre was Australia's most popular form of entertainment. Sydney alone had more than 30 houses offering live shows. George was introduced to theatrical entrepreneur Harry Daddy Clay, who auditioned him in front of an audience at his Bridge Theatre in Newtown. George launched into the sort of routine that would become his trademark. He stopped the show with his acrobatic dance. It was just the break he'd been looking for. He and Rita were hired at four pounds a week to tour a clay circuit of suburban vaudeville houses. Well, I was uh, of George Wallace's feed, and he used to go mad because he'd say, you're a good looker and I'm, I'm, I'm not. They're not taking any notice of me. They're taking all the notice of you, and it got cranky. The act got some unkind reviews, but eventually the critic from the influential theatre magazine saw some encouraging signs. George Wallace is a comedian with a delightfully quiet style. He gets his laughs without any forcing. His wife helps in the patter. They wound up by introducing their son, George Wallace Jr., in some clever acrobatic poses. George spun him up and uh, held him in his hand, bounced him on one leg. He was a great success, naturally. <laughs> so dear little kid. At the end of the five weeks it took to complete the tour, Rita bowed out. The stage was George's home, not hers. Well, I was a very nervous person on stage, and then that didn't seem to leave me. But I couldn't keep it up because I had no one to look after. George, young George. George found a new stage partner, comic, singer, eccentric dancer and baton twirler Jack Patterson. 